and welcome to our EduQuest interview 102. My name is Kirsten Winkler and I am joined by my guest today, Carlos Sousa. He is the co-founder and CEO of uh, Viduca. And Viduca, well, I guess many um, are already going to be familiar with the name, but um, short and sweet, Viduca is an online video learning and MOOC platform out of Brazil. So that should be a pretty interesting talk. And Carlos, very happy to have you on today. It's a pleasure to be here as well, Kirsten, uh, here to share our results, share our vision, and to help uh, uh, for other people to understand, to learn on what we are doing, and to ultimately help us on our purpose to democratize top quality education in Brazil. All right, so if you allow me, I would like to start a little bit on a personal note um, to to just understand you as the entrepreneur and, well, co-founder of Viduca a little bit better. And tell me something about your, your past, um, where did you grow up and your education and how, if at all, did it contribute to what you're doing today? I mean, definitely. Um, I am from Vitória, Espírito Santo, which is a state here in Brazil, in between uh, Rio de Janeiro and Bahia. Uh, and I am an aeronautical engineer. I graduated at uh, ITA, Aeronautical Institute of Technology, which is one of the top uh, engineering schools here in Brazil. And just uh, after I graduated, uh, I went uh, to work on investment banking, which is unfortunately a common destination for a lot of engineering uh, engineers uh, from top schools, not not uh, not only in Brazil, but actually, uh, uh, this is a trend uh, that you can see in many many countries. And after a short period of time in working in investment banking in Banco Garantia, I went to work uh, in marketing at Procter and Gamble, the big consumer goods company uh, from US. And I worked there for, uh, for nine years. But um, I always had a dream to have a company which would not only focus on building profits, but on top of building profits, that would focus on helping improving people's lives. And uh, after a sabbatical year, I studied, uh, I went to the US, I went to study business models that were booming in the US, but uh, at that point, 2011, uh, mm -hmm. I didn't arrive yet in Brazil. And in these studies, I found this huge revolution that is happening in education, thanks to technology. I found the, the open course for movement, which started with MIT, with Massachusetts Institute of Technology, when they declared that they would uh, record and distribute for free all their classes, all their lectures. This movement grew. All the main universities uh, in the world joined this movement. But at that point, this movement uh, wasn't yet in Brazil because of two reasons. Number one, all this content uh, is mostly in English, and only 2% of Brazilian population speaks fluent English in order to understand uh, this content. And the second reason was that the main universities in Brazil at that point uh, they weren't following the steps of the top U.S. universities. When I looked at, at, this, at this opportunity, I said, wow, this is what needs to be done because of three reasons. Number one, uh, there's nothing like that. There wasn't nothing like that in Brazil at that time, 2011. Uh, number two, uh, there's a huge demand for top quality education in Brazil. I mean, Brazil is the economy number five. However, if you take any educational ranking, Brazil always appears at the bottom. And this becomes the bottleneck for economic growth in Brazil. I mean, there's lack of top quality education, therefore, there's lack of a training of uh, workforce, labor force. And therefore, we cannot grow even 2-3% uh, GDP per year. And the third reason is a very, very, very personal one. 
I come from a family of college professors. My father, my mother, my relatives, most of them, they were teachers. I myself also, also thought a lot. Unfortunately, today I don't have much time to, to teach, but it is something that runs in, our, in my family, and this, uh, that's something I love. Okay, great. So this was somewhat the, the starting point and the, the three yeah. big motivational um, factors or the pillars Viduka is built upon. And um, so as you said, roughly two years back you mentioned the uh, open educational resource movement. I guess online video has existed for some time, but but certainly now with uh, better and better uh, internet uh, connection speed. Um, and uh, the third point um, then, I think this phenomenon of uh, the MOOC, so the Massive Open Online Courses, um, also emerging within the past, um, yeah, I guess, 24 months. And Viduka, I think, just turned two. Um, as well in uh, September, if I'm not completely mistaken. So if we take all of this and this, this, these new movements within the higher education space or more specifically um, higher education online, um, what makes Viduka and what you and your co-founders have built unique? What distinguishes you from what some of the other um, players are doing, I guess, besides that uh, you obviously um, translated um, some of the lectures and um, have some original ones in Brazilian Portuguese, and you just said, because just 2% um, of the Brazilian population speak fluent English, but what are the, the other core features that make Viduca unique? Okay. Um. First, let's start with the purpose. Uh, our purpose, Viduca's purpose, is to democratize top quality education in Brazil and emerging markets with courses, with the video lectures from world class universities for free, in native language, in a contextualized and personalized way, and with certification. This is our purpose. When we started, we started pretty much with uh, free online courses. Viduca today has uh, something almost 6,000 video lectures, uh, videos, uh, all categorized, uh, organized, and, uh, and translated to Portuguese. We are. Uh, this is an ongoing process to translate everything, to put everything in Portuguese. And uh, um, since the first version of website went uh, on air on March last year. Uh, we changed a lot, we evolved a lot. We started with uh, only free courses, as I'm saying to you. And uh, in June this year, uh, something uh, one, uh, one year and two or three months after the first version, we were able to build our, our second platform, which has three uh, key differences versus the previous one. Number one, it has tools that help the student to interact with the content. So, uh, for example, we have a search and speech algorithm which allows people to search for words within the video. Uh, we have uh, an online notebook which allows people to take notes um, at the same time they are watching the video without stopping the video and the notes are saved at that specific time, um, this is the first key uh, group of differences. The second uh, key difference, uh, group of differences, are tools that allow uh, students to interact among themselves. So the, all the, the forum uh, technology that we are building, the chat technology that allows people to, everybody who's watching uh, uh, a specific video lecture, to interact among themselves. And the third, and maybe the most important, that we introduced on June this year uh, was the quizzes and tests. And how this works. When a student uh, watches uh, a lecture, this lecture, uh, usually 50 minutes, is broke down on small parts. 
small concepts of between five to ten minutes. And once the professor stops explaining one part, one concept, the video lecture stops and then pops out a series of questions in order for the student to test if he or she learned that point. And for us, it's very important. Why? Because with this uh, measure, with this tracking, we can issue a certification. We started this on June with the first two mocks in Latin America, produced here in Latin America. Uh, they are a uh, course on physics from the University of Sao Paulo, a course on uh, statistics and probability here mm -hmm. from the University of Sao Paulo as well. And we, we got huge traction. I mean, uh, more than 20,000 enrolled students in like, 30 days I mean, without spending one single dollar in advertising. Only on those uh, two courses. If you look at total, Educa has more than 3 million uh, visitors, which is uh, without spending one single dollar in advertising. It's a, it's a very impressive number. And uh, after that, I mean, if you look at it, this is uh, basically uh, what Coursera is doing in the US, with Udemy, Udemy, Iversity, it's the same thing. Now, we are a technology company. As a vision, we want to have the platform that offers the best online learning experience in the world. This is our vision. We are a technology company. Not that the content is not important. The content is, is very important. But we want to partner with the best content providers and offer their content through our platform. This is the vision. And with this vision in mind, in October now, we launched the first uh, open uh, online MBA, which uh, is totally free if you only want to watch the content. But if the student wants to earn a real certificate, which earns credits, I mean, uh, it's the real deal. Um, she can, he or she can pay, and then uh, they will be uh, managed. They, they, they will follow a certification program, which is composed by all the free video lectures, plus online tutoring, plus a, a package of features for them to earn the certificate. I mean, uh, summarizing, in terms of content, we want to, what makes us different is that we want to provide in the Lucas platform courses that uh, prepares people in Brazil to occupy uh, those, or to work on those economic sectors which have the most, the highest demand for talent here in Brazil. And there are a lot of them. I mean, in technology, in oil and gas, in energy. There are a lot of, uh, in uh, construction. There are a lot of sectors, economic sectors here in Brazil, which are key for our economic growth, but there are lack, there is a huge lack of talent, well uh, formed, well graduated, well prepared, to work on those sectors. This is on the content front. And on the technology front, which is our DNA, what makes us different is that we are building a technology here, which is, as we say, student-centric, which gives power to the student. What we want to do is the following. We want to have in our technology tools that enable the student to learn whenever uh, he or she wants, so it's a, an asynchronous platform. Uh, we are working on an algorithm, which is a personalized learning plan, which takes into consideration what the student already knows, and based on that, plus based on an objective the student gives us, the algorithm recommends a specific plan, so it's customized per student, and there are a lot of new things that are there. Are I would really love to, to share with you, but uh, summarizing to you in the content, we want to offer courses to prepare students to work on the high demand economic sectors in Brazil, and from the technology we are building a student-centric technology platform. 
Yeah, I think uh, you mentioned uh, two very um, interesting points that uh, in preparation for this interview I, I noticed myself that um, many of your of your courses or your own courses are now um, centered around this um, uh, what you said uh, business and uh, also vocational training and um, as you just um, acknowledged this is basically um, what you are catering as uh, the way um, I understand is what Brazilians need most at the moment. And then um, the second point you mentioned that you see yourself uh, or yourselves as a uh, technology startup within the education space uh, for sure, but um, that you are basically built uh, upon the technology and I think uh, what makes you distinct from some of the uh, competitors in the field is that uh, of course you have also developed um, some patented technologies and I think this puts you in a very comfortable um, and smart position probably seen mid and long term when um, some of the other players I'm sure are also thinking more intensively about the Brazilian market and whether they might be interested in um, coming over to Brazil or how do you see the importance of your your patents for the future of Viduca? I mean uh, uh the patents are very, very important. Why is that? Because at the end of the day, uh, by building a technology company, we can build um, value that will be recognized and that will, uh, 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 that will give us strength uh, when this market uh, starts to consolidate itself. I mean, the education technology market, I mean, it's the crown jewel, it's, 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 the, it's what's happening now. I mean, it's the, the hot topic of the moment. And uh, uh, it's on, uh, the way I see it, it's on its early days. There, there's a lot to be done yet in this market. And once we pass this initial phase, there will come this consolidation phase where uh, when uh, all the key players in the world they will consolidate. I mean, and there is one thing that will give us value the way we see is the, uh, are the technology patterns. The session speech algorithm, there's another algorithm, mm -hmm. that, algorithm that is really interesting which is called the content sense, content sense which uh, it was inspired on Google's AdSense and what it does is that it semantically it understands a newspaper article and with one line of code outside the Duca's website understands, for example, that uh, there is an article, a newspaper article about uh, economy, about uh, interest rates, and automatically shows video lectures that helps explaining that article for the newspaper's readers. Uh, there are a lot of this stuff that we are developing here and we see a lot of value on them. Now, uh, in terms of the Brazilian market, I'm sure, I mean, Brazilian uh, market for education is huge. The biggest ed educational company in the world is Brazilian. It's called Croton, which is worth 13 billion reais, almost uh, 7 billion dollars. And um, uh, the other day, there, there was this report from uh, Financial Times who asked me why do I think this happens, the biggest educational company is Brazilian. I mean, for me, it makes total sense. Why is that? Because Brazil is the country that has the biggest gap between its uh, economic position and its education position. So, Brazil is the country that has the most to profit from educating its labor force. It's, I mean, it's, it's applying the logic. And when we see our numbers, I mean, uh, Brazil has something around 7 million college students. It's the population number five uh, in terms of college students in the world. However, this number has a lot to grow. 
And why am I saying that? Because if you see the percentage of students, uh, the percentage, I'm sorry, the percentage of people between 18 to 24 years old currently enroll in a higher education institution, it's 17%, one seven. Average Latin America is 35%. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot to grow. There's an, uh, uh, another number that, that I, uh, I really like, which is our also our target audience, which are people uh, who already have college degree. In Brazil, we have 18, 18, 18 million people who have already college degree, and this is a little bit less than 10% of, of our population. Mm -hmm. When you compare this percentage with other countries, for example, if you compare that with US, 40% of North Americans have college degree. So um, 18 million people is big because Brazil is big, but has the, the potential of at least multiply by four uh, over the next years. So uh, Brazil is a very big market. It's uh, underdeveloped in terms of education. And it is the market that has the most profit from training its uh, labor force. So this is why this initiative, what we are doing here with Educa is so important. This is why it is attracting uh, so much attention from media, uh, not only here, but uh, all over the world. And this is why uh, we have a very, very important team or a very, very uh, strong team working on developing those technologies, on developing the Lucas brand, on partnering with content providers in order to help us uh, realize our purpose, which is democratize top quality education in Brazil. Yeah, I think combining your last um, two two answers, um, so sort of seeing uh, as you were talking about the consolidation of the market uh, as it seems right now and uh, probably for the months and uh, yes, I guess years um, to come and see that there is still that much uh, big and untapped potential within the Brazilian market um, itself. I think that's pretty exciting um, times and uh, also based on some of the numbers and figures you have just uh, shared, Carlos. And however, uh, wouldn't be me, so I have to ask, um, as you already mentioned, that you want to be um, the provider or the technology-centered education startup uh, for Brazil and emerging markets. Um, I have to ask you, of course, um, for, um, I guess, some take on what is your bigger picture and um, where, what would you like to achieve and where would you like to see yourselves in, let's say, you are two years old now, a lot of things have happened within the past months only, so where do you see yourself in the next year, maybe, or in the next two years? Uh, that's a great question, Kirsten. We see ourselves as one of the leading technology providers for MOOCs, for online courses in the world. We see us developing technologies such as personalized learning plans, customized uh, classrooms. Um, we see us developing this technology which will improve, significantly change the way people learn. Now, uh, in terms of regions, we see ourselves playing in Brazil, playing in Latin America, playing India, playing in uh, Africa, playing in China, playing in the places where, uh, I mean, the places, uh, the countries that doesn't speak English are the countries uh, which need top quality education the most. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not running to the countries uh, which already have a good educational system. We are going to the countries which needs uh, that needs education the most. I mean, those are the countries we want to focus. Okay, uh, we see ourselves 
developing these technologies. We see ourselves partnering with uh, top content providers, with the top universities in the world, and customizing their content to offer it through our website and to key what people need in order to grow their economies. As I said, in Brazil, we have some three, four, five sectors, most important sectors, economic sectors, uh, in which we have a shortage of talent. We need to train those people, work on those sectors. And this is the same for all over Latin America. This is the same on the, all the key emerging markets. And these uh, are, the players we, uh, are the places we want to. All right. And then um, I think two interesting things you mentioned a couple of times. Um, I think it's probably also been a smart move to to rely on some uh, existing structures and um, as you put it uh, work with the best players in the um, individual um, niches or um, in their individual fields. And then um, you also said that uh, Veduka is a very student-centric um, platform. So when it comes to the pedagogy of, uh, of MOOCs and uh, also online video instruction, I guess the main point of criticism um, I, I always hear and I think to some extent also justified is basically that it's some embellished uh, YouTube channel and you watch some videos and then you do a little bit, um, I don't know, a quiz or you answer a question um, and so on. And that um, the startups in the MOOC space um, don't concentrate enough on the pedagogy and the creativity to actually push the vertical forward to really build something meaningful and future oriented. But I'm sure you have a good answer um, for this criticism. So um, what what do you say? Is there a lack of creativity and the lack of, or a lack in pedagogy and how can we solve this? I mean uh, at least the way we see it here in Brazil uh, in Veduca uh, we already filed for two patents, and uh, I don't see us with uh, uh, lack of uh, 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 creativity. We are implementing things, algorithms, technologies that nobody has, like search and speech, like this content sense algorithm that I uh, described it to you, like a personalized learning plan that I described it to you, and there are a lot of them that we are implementing in, uh, here in Veduca in Brazil now. Uh, there is one criticism uh, which I take from you from what you're saying is like the lack of a uh, 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 pedagogic approach, and for that, I mean. My reply is this, we here, we are a technology company committed in improving the educational efficiency. So we apply the Lean uh, Startup, uh, the Lean Startup uh, methodology to improve our platform and to discover among all the algorithms that we are developing which ones improve the educational performance the most? And we evolve this thing. I mean, the other day we were discussing about an algorithm and implementing an algorithm which groups people uh, by affinity and forces people, not forces, not, uh, encourages. Uh, yes, encourages people uh, who have the same affinity. Mm -hmm. uh, to study together. The results are good. Now, people ask me, uh, Carlos, what about diversity? Shouldn't we enforce diversity instead of uh, letting people choose among uh, who they have the more affinity, the most affinity to study uh, with? Should, shouldn't we like force diversity instead of uh, pushing affinity? I don't know. 
This is the second experience we are going to make. It's like forcing diversity and seeing what happens. And by uh, innovations like this, we need to, to, to test things. And we are testing those things. So we are going to test. We already tested with, uh, with uh, affinity. Now we are going to test with diversity. And we are going to see which one's better. And we are going to force what is better. I mean, we are, we are committed in improving things through testing. We don't come here to, we are not working based on preconcepts. We started from a blank sheet of paper. And our approach is to learn what works, what doesn't work, and reapply what works. This is our approach in developing education technology to improve the educational performance and, in the end of the day, having uh, the best platform, the best online experience platform uh, in the world. I mean, this is the way we see you. Okay? It's, it's very simple and pragmatic, but uh, I mean, the way the way I see it, that's it. <laughs> right, and. Um... I think it's very interesting that you mentioned your um, long years and uh, experience and expertise in, in marketing, which makes me think, uh, is there also a new facet to the role of the professor today? What I see um, a little bit happening in the space now is um, to basically animate professors or encourage them to also take part in the promotion of their own courses. Is this something you think um, we will see increasingly in the future, or do you think um, this is sort of uh, part and the responsibility of the platform and the professor should, what they have always done, I guess, uh, focus on the educational part of things, or do you take this approach and, and see that it definitely makes sense that to some extent the, the role of the professor is changing and um, that they also have a certain responsibility in, um, well, to use the, uh, the word promoting their cause. I mean, uh, I don't think the role of the professor changed. I think the environment for the professor to exercise his role changed. Mm -hmm. The role is the same, but with all the technologies available, with all their students connected, with everything, his environment changed, so he needs to adapt in order to better execute his role. I mean, the professor, a, a, a typical college professor, he has uh, the role of uh, educating, he has the role of uh, developing research and uh, the tech he needs to use these technologies like MOOCs, for example, MOOC platforms, to better execute his role because it's already a very important role. I mean, he needs to take this and, and uh, we are partnering with a very strong group of professors from uh, very from top universities. And they are embracing that in a way that uh, they are using our technology with their current uh, classes, within their current roles in the universities. And I mean, uh, if I, I, I am not going to ask to the professors to do anything more than what they are doing right now, which is using our technology, technology that we are developing. For them also, it's for the students, but also for the professors to potentialize their ability to execute their role. I mean, more I, I, I cannot ask more than giving us inputs in our development, which they do, but I don't think the role, their role changed. I think their environment changed, and uh, uh, now they have a better, better tools to execute their role. This way I see. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Um, that's great. Then I guess uh, another interesting and looking at the time
Totally. Um, also, last question is when I see or hear you talk about um, making experiences and a lot is happening in a short time and probably some are also um, experiment. I also see others experiment with their business models. Uh, may it be um, on the technology side, maybe white labeling this, others experiment with um, selling the certificates, so whether there is value in this. Um, I think compared with um, some of them, you have been smart if it was a um, sort of um, willing decision of not taking on overly uh, a lot of investment in Veduka. Um, but uh, of course having some investors uh, in your startup sooner or later you will have to think about your business model and how you are going to make money and uh, what do you see as the most promising for you in your position at least um, at the moment or right now? Uh, I think the best way to answer your question is to give you some figures and some facts about this first MBA. I mean, this is the first monetization that we execute, right? It's 20 days on air. Mm -hmm. We launched uh, October 1st, actually 28 days, almost one month, a month. And uh, without spending one single dollar in advertising, we have already 400 uh, paid customers. And it's not a paying customer that pays $60, $70, because we are not offering a piece of paper which has no value, with no value. Right. We are offering a certificate, a certificate program, and it's a $3,000 certificate program. Okay? And we already have uh, 400 paying customers. More important than that, we have 5,000 people who are interested in watching it for free, but they are thinking on uh, switch to the certificate program. And even more important than that, we have very, 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 very big companies which already came after us asking for special prices for training their employees, number one, and number two, asking for us to develop uh, custom programs for their employees. And I'm saying companies, I'm going to tell you one, which was our first uh, corporate client, let me put it that way, which is Itaú Bank here in Brazil, which is the biggest uh, private bank here. Mm -hmm. More than 100,000 employees. Great. You know, so I, I, I think these numbers, uh, they 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 portray the the, the potential uh, the business potential for an idea which was not created specifically to make money it was created to solve a real problem and by solving a real problem we know that uh, we can make a lot of money out of it but. Uh, we are really committed with the purpose of democratizing top quality education. And uh, by doing that, and by doing that right, I'm sure we are going to make a lot of money. Actually, we are in the middle of, the, of a second uh, investment round. We have a lot of investors uh, interested in, in, in joining us now. And whenever we look at a partner and we see investors as partners as well, we don't look uh, at the money aspect only. We look at, um, at the, their capacity to invest, but first and foremost, their capacity to contribute to evolve our business model, because there's one thing we know for sure is that it's going to change. So we need the best people, the best partners in order to adapt it. The, the people who live longer, as Charlie Starvin used to say, are not the strongest or the smartest, are the people who are most adaptable to change. 
All right, Carlos, I think um, this has been uh, pretty exciting and you made some um, very interesting um, points and educated us about um, the Brazilian market specifically, but also giving us the outlook for um, uh, and, and give us the, the bigger picture of where you um, are heading with Veduca and um, yeah, it really sounds like exciting times, so congratulations, you really seem to be in an excellent um, position there within the market and also um, in, in your part of the world and uh, yeah, thank you for taking the time and um, telling us a little bit more about your your vision, what you are up to, how you structure and organize um, um, your startup and that you focus so heavily on the technology and really um, building something uh, unique and valuable there. And uh, of course then the best of success for um, soon closing your next funding round. Okay, thank you a lot, Kirsten. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and I hope we, we do this again uh, sometime in the future with more news, with more to share, and um, again, thank you. Yeah, I'm sure this was not the last time we we heard um, of Viduka for everybody who's interested in learning more. I think uh, Twitter is always the the easiest. So the Twitter handle is at Viduka Brasil and with an S, so not with a Z. And uh, otherwise, you can also tweet, of course, at, at EduQuest or at Kirsten Winkler, and I'm happy to um, send your questions or um, remarks and everything over to Carlos and, and let him know. So thanks again so much. Thank you everybody for watching. Just two house announcements. Um, we are going to have the second EdTech pitch battle this Thursday, so the 31st of October, our All Hallows um, EdTech pitch battle number two. And then next Monday I'm going to interview Pierre Dubuc uh, on November 4th of Open Classrooms and he, just like Carlos, also has a pretty exciting story as he basically co-founded Open Classrooms at uh, age 14 only and 10 years later the startup is still doing pretty well and is flourishing and everything is um, pretty exciting for them. So I'm sure this is also a story you, or at least some of you, might be interested in hearing. So yeah, I think that's it from us. Thank you so much and um, see you next time. Bye.